Hi and welcome back. I'm Caroline Bass to the Dow of Horsemanship. This is Everything Horses and More channel on YouTube and we are going to be talking about pushy horse behavior, understanding your horse's perspective, part two. And this is my partner, Zor. And then you might know we've got the little two, two and a half year old, don't know if the camera can pan in over there. Mr. Blue, Lovey is walking towards us, but they'll be over in a little bit. All right, so again, how many times have you all been told not to allow your horse, young or adult, into your space? Or worse yet, don't let them crowd you, push on you, rub on you. Most of us have. So in a previous video, we discussed why horses are pushy. In today's video, I will be explaining how to assess your horse's behavior so you can learn why your horse is pushy. This is so important and for the following reasons. To understand what motivates your horse's behavior. Get to the real cause so you can resolve the issue and not deal with just the symptom. I love you too. Know which training approach will work best to help your horse learn new habits, meaning what is the best approach or strategy to help them not be so pushy. But first we have to understand why they're pushy. The third is stop repeating. This is going to help stop repeating old habits and negative behaviors. Fourth is so we can create new behaviors. Basically, that's called behavior modification. <clears throat> we can create new attitudes with our horses and new mindsets. And fifth, we want to be able to assess our horse's pushiness because we want to be able to develop a great start or restart with the relationship and the partnership that we want with them. Assessing the unwanted behavior should always come first before we do anything. If we don't understand the why, how will we know what will work best? And that means we don't want to compromise our horses. So often we're told to just get the horse out of our space, just get him out and use whatever big movement, pushiness, pressure, dominance, get him out, get him out. Maybe even punish them, maybe even hit them. And right there you're ruining everything. So we want to understand why, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Because I definitely don't want to compromise my horse's integrity, their spirit, or the potential relationship I'm going to be developing with them. So this means we set up the opportunity to evaluate our horse, see why they do what they do, and try to understand their perspective. That'll happen when we just set it up. See, horses are so smart, and so much of what they do is instinctive, not cognitive. And this is where we go wrong, thinking that they are doing what they do on purpose. Now, don't get me wrong. Some horses are super smart and do plan ahead, and some are raised like brats. But most horses aren't that smart or spoiled, and they truly rely on their instincts to guide them. Instincts, social behavior, too. So how do we begin assessing? First, I will spend time observing my horses in their natural habitat, meaning out with other horses. Well, thank you, Mr. Blue. That's the first thing you're going to want to do. Because when we can watch them with other horses, that's going to give us the easiest, most accurate read on their nature and their behavior, number one. Unfortunately, most of us can't do that. Our horses aren't socialized properly like these guys are, and most of the boarding facilities is such a liability. So do you just, we're here to film the baby. So as a, you saw the baby clacking, Sabrina, maybe the camera can pick up on that. You guys are just watching all sorts of behavior right now. When Blue got in front of me in the camera, he 
did a submissive behavior so that he could be accepted or not accepted by Zor because he wanted to share in the grooming. And I mean, this is why it's so important to be able to watch horses in a natural environment as much as possible. And I know so many of you can't. So how are we gonna assess them if we can't put them out with other horses? We're gonna get there. Let me see if I can get him a little bit further away. Come here, Beba. Come here, sweep. Oh, I know, I know. So there's a little bit of pushy. I'm giving him steady pressure. It's good for you guys. Steady pressure, steady pressure with my fingertips. Good boy, good boy. And I've got my trusty tool here, my lunge whip, so that if my fingers don't, he doesn't respond to my fingers, we'll use some rhythmic pressure, driving pressure. <laughs> So what if I can't watch them in a natural setting with other horses? What do you do? So we're going to talk about that. I will test them one-on-one -on -one with me through a series of exercises that are designed to help me get to know who they really are, their nature, as well as what have they learned behaviorally. All right, let's get you out. That's a little too obnoxious. That's your typical two-year-old. So here's a list of the areas I look at when getting a true and accurate assessment of a pushy horse. These are the areas I'm gonna list them. Meaning, is it nature or nurture? Is it learned? Nurture means learned behaviors. And remember, if you guys don't know this already, I talk about it a lot in my other videos. Behavior, most behaviors are learned. Instead of instinctive behaviors that horses have, I got it. Most behaviors are learned. Not instinctive, not the behaviors you're born with. Come. Yeah, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> not on top of me, but that's okay. So there's four areas, you guys, that I look for, and they're in these categories. Mm -hmm.